Check, check. Can you hear me? <laughs> okay. I hope you're all caffeinated in the room. So thanks for coming to my talk. It's called Building a Blazing Fast Tmax Plugin with Crystal. So a small intro by myself. Uh, my name is Jorge. I'm a freelance full stack developer. I work mostly with Ruby on Rails and React. I'm based in Barcelona and these are my socials. Um, as you can see, I should really update my profile pic in, in GitHub. <laughs> so the agenda for the talk. Um, uh, first, we'll have an intro with some context that we need to to know beforehand, to, to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> then the second block will be a small tutorial on how to build a Tmax plugin with Crystal. And lastly, the third block will be experience report of well, what, what I experienced while working with Crystal, especially about uh, rewriting Tmax fingers uh, from Bash to, to Crystal. And then I'll have some benchmarks in, in between. <laughs> So, well, let's start with what's Tmax. Like, anybody uses Tmax here or knows what Tmax is? Well, raise your hand. <laughs> okay, a few hands. <laughs> so, according to their website, the Tmax is a terminal multiplexer and it allows to run programs in the background. So, terminal multiplexer is just like a fancy word to say that. It allows you to have multiple consoles in the same terminal window. Okay, so in that regard, Tmax is no different than your favorite modern terminal. You have uh, splits. No? You can divide the screen in multiple terminals. You also have tabs. So yeah, in that regard, they let you combine. They both let you combine multiple terminals in a single window. Uh, other things that you can do with Tmax, um, you can customize it a lot. So if you like to customize your development environment instead of coding, <laughs> Tmax is for you. Maybe this talk too. <laughs> uh, so you can automate sessions, configure custom shortcuts, uh, colors. Um, also, the configuration is portable. So you can put it in your dot files and take it with you to different machines. Then something like a benefit from Tmax that is kind of exclusive to Tmax uh, over terminal emulators is uh, attaching and reattaching to sessions in the background. So um, this is very useful when you work with remote Linux machines where you SSH to. And in, I did a very elaborate illustration to explain it. So um, let's say that you connect to a remote SSH server and then you start a, a Tmax session and you open a few terminals and in one of them you have a long running task, like think of it like a database migration that can take hours or even days. And then uh, your network fails, <laughs> or the Wi-Fi or whatever. Um, so this is not a problem with Tmax because the processes are running in the server in the background. So you can reconnect to the server, run this command to attach to the session and your commands are there safely waiting for you in, in the background, shield from any network issues. And also another benefit that is, is that it runs over a single SSH connection, which is um, the, if your network is kind of spotty, that's a good thing. And on the other hand, if you use just your terminal with your splits and tabs, uh, this is what usually happens at this. Well, you have your terminal, you open a few tabs and you connect again to the same server. So then you're creating a separate SSH connection for each uh, tab um, as, uh, as highlighted here. And if the connection fails, your command is gone. Uh, you need to connect again and run it again. And in the case of the long running task uh, that is like running for several days and it's a 90% progress, well, that's gone too and there's nothing you can do about. So yeah, that's a, a benefit of using Tmax. Then blazing fast uh, TM. So this is a controversial controversial thing. This is just um, something that you put in the readme of your uh, repo, <laughs> and automatically your your project is fast. Uh, it's used a lot, <laughs> so it's kind of a joke. Uh, so in the context of uh, this plugin that I'm working on, and uh, that is productivity and keyboard efficiency mm -hmm. and all that, is just uh, that it feels fast and snappy, and usually for that. It's just that it runs under 50 milliseconds. So a small recap of, of uh, is that yeah, Blazing Fast is just 
under 15 milliseconds, not that blazing. And the Temux, uh, Tmax uh, lets you combine multiple terminals into one. You can attach and reattach, and it's customizable and scriptable. Uh, so that means plugins, and that's uh, like a nice segue to the next block of the talk, which is how to build a Tmax plugin uh, in general <laughs> first. So uh, Tmax has uh, like a very extensive command line interface uh, that allows you to interact with it. So you can query like how many tabs you have open, how many splits, the size of the splits. Uh, you can create windows or, uh, or tabs. Uh, you can capture the content of the terminal. So there are many things that you can do and you need to do it through a command line interface. And the plugins themselves are mostly shell scripts. So you can use any language. Um, so this is like the most basic uh, Tmax plugin that doesn't do anything, but it's just an example. <laughs> so on the left, on the left, right? Yeah. So on the left, we have the um, Tmax configuration file with, where you customize your stuff. And you can run shell commands there, which is like the initialization of the plugin. And on the right side is a shell script, which is the plugin itself that just sets a keyboard shortcut and then shows a message. So to do the same with Crystal, uh, since it's just a CLI, we, we can bootstrap one. Um, we, we have the basic structure of a CLI in Crystal, but we add um, .tmax entry point, which is a, a tiny shell script. So we want to write the least amount of shell scripting, <laughs> but we still need to do, we still need some because uh, when users uh, download the plugin, maybe they don't have uh, the binary because they need to fetch it or compile it from source. Um, and maybe they don't even have uh, the crystal tool, sh tool chain in, in their file system. So we need that like a bootstrap shell script of, of sorts. But the rest of, of it we can do in Crystal. And then uh, we can use the, um, the standard library uh, option parser. And we have like two phases, like the initialization phase and the run or execution phase. And so in the init phase, uh, this runs when you source the Tmax config file. And there we set like bindings that call uh, to itself, to the plugin itself. So one trick to do this is to use process.executable path. So this way you have like the current path of the current running program. Um, you can reference, you can reference it. So small demo here. Yeah. Okay. So the 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 plugin itself, uh, as we can see, is um, here. So it's, well, let's open it. This is like the very basic stuff. Uh, we have the current path. This is why I avoid bash because you need to do all this to get the current path. <laughs> um, we call the binary here and we pass the sub command that we want to run. And the main file is uh, this one, um, just what we saw in the slides. Um, just to. Uh, regarding the command line interface of Tmax, uh, yeah, you can see in the man page like many co commands like this, like list panes or new window. So in the end, you interact like this. You do Tmux list panes, and you have the output there or new window, and it, it creates a new tab uh, and all that. And the the plugin itself is just a, a in this example, so we press Control B, which is the prefix that you need to uh, press every time you do anything with Tmax. And prefix B and C, and yeah, that's the plugin. <laughs> Very basic, but but from there, the like uh, we can build more complex stuff. Let me disable this thing. Okay, and now back to the slides. Okay, so now uh, to the next part of the talk, which is um, 
how to be like um plugin that some that does something <laughs> uh so where i well i share my experience with crystal um my journey from bash which gave me ptsd <laughs> to ruby and then crystal and the learnings on the way so i hope that some of this you can apply to your own CLIs and not just with tmax plugins <laughs> so what's the plugin itself um so uh, when I started the plugin, I was uh, really into this, these extensions for, for the browser, which give you like bin like bindings to the, to the browser. Um, so there are many of them. I have a list here. But the one in very interesting part is that they have this hint mode where you press a key and they highlight uh, clickable stuff in the page with uh, some letters. And you press those letters and then you click that. So the plugin itself um, is that yeah, I just wanted to translate this experience to the terminal just to copy paste stuff because I found myself uh, copying and pasting a lot of stuff in the terminal. Uh, so yeah, that's the that's the repo. So if you can give it a start, give me a dopamine hat hit. <laughs> so well, the plugin itself uh, looks like this. Yeah, one second. <laughs> Okay, so uh, yeah. again, uh, for example, we have, I don't know, we are doing something in the terminal. Okay, this is like the, pre the, the keys that I press. So I, I press the prefix here, in this case it's control A, and then I press control F, which is the, the binding that I assigned to invoke the plugin. Oops, sorry. Again, and it highlights stuff in in the terminal with some some letters in in green. So if I want to copy the the SHA of the the commit in the middle, I can just press a P, um, and I'll have it in my clipboard. So it will do it show paste it, and it's it's here. Uh, and also you can you can open links so if you do there are a um, control n it opens the link <laughs> well slow the internet but <laughs> you get the point <laughs> uh, let me actually close chrome <laughs> so yeah that's the plugin basically um so, I mean, I showed you first like the very basic building blocks, but uh, you can do a lot of stuff uh, there. So, yeah, back to the slides. So, yeah, this is how it looks and what it does. Um, so, yeah, uh, the bling, the applying was initially written in Bash. Um, the, the idea was that Bash is everywhere. So, it's portable in theory and Although the language is very limited, it can be fun to work around the limitations. But after some time, I found that uh, Bash is not really any everywhere. <laughs> like Mac, Mac OS uh, has Bash 3, which is like uh, super limited uh, due to licensing issues. And the, cons the constraint thing, like uh, it's fun to work around the limitations for a while, but it get, gets old very fast. And <laughs> you, you want to do very basic stuff and the language just gets in the way. <laughs> And writing a, a truly portable shell script is even more more limited. And at some point, I rewrote a part in AWK, uh, thinking that uh, it would be portable also and uh, whatever. But it's the same issue. Like actually, there are several implementations of this uh, language, like GNU, AWK, or whatever. So in the end, not a good experience. I don't recommend. <laughs> so it was. Uh, Basically, this is are the, the problems that they found in the Bash version, and I was looking for a for a new language. So I had some ideas in mind for this language that I was looking for. So first, it should bring me joy because I had PTSD from Bash, <laughs> and it should be a good fit for building a CLI. So that means uh, the performance part it should be fast blazing fast enough <laughs> so this this means two things like should uh, have a fast startup time uh, so the basic hello world should be super fast if it takes like 30 seconds for a hello world 
that's already too much because then I will have very uh, little room to actually work on the what the plugin needs to do and it needs to be fast in general uh, performing the, the computation and there is the distribution so it should be like a single binary if possible because that's uh, how you can avoid like dependency issues like if the user has a bash 3 or bash 5 or whatever that also means no no interpreted language like or no bundler because yes it's more dependencies and more maintenance burden and also small file size because this could be used in servers uh, theoretically so we cannot uh, afford like 100 megabytes uh, binaries so in general uh, there are three aspects that I wanted uh, to have uh, DX, uh, performance, and distribution. So, first I rewrote it in, in Ruby because I was already um, uh, familiar with it. It's polemic talking about in, in CrystalConf. <laughs> but, well, it was uh, like a good fit for me. Uh, there's good tooling and tricks me joy. So, I rewrote, rewrote the whole thing. Um, Ruby is, in terms of performance, is actually fast. Um, this is a tool called Hyperfine. Um, so if you put some flags, uh, you can get the hello world to be in just five milliseconds. But if you do any, if you don't do anything, it's one hundred milliseconds. <clears throat> so relying in this um, in these uh, flags is is not really a good experience because it means yet that you cannot use gems or third party code. So in that regard, it, it worsens the DX. And I thought that it would improve distribution because it would be a, like a dependency-free Ruby program, but in the end, you are still dependent to the Ruby interpreter. And the disabled gems flag might be even gone in the future. I saw that in the mailing list of, of Ruby. There are some solutions that pack uh, Ruby in a single standalone binary, but the file size is super big, like near 100 megabytes. The experience is not really good, and you cannot do this uh, disable gems hack. Then I tried Mini Ruby or M Ruby, which is surprisingly starts very fast without any weird uh, thing like flag or whatever, and it's a good DX. Uh, but this kind of custom, like everybody do, does their own thing because it's meant for embedding rather than building CLIs. And um, when importing the project to M Ruby, the like overall uh, performance wasn't very good. So I know it's quite like Ruby, but it's not Ruby. And I know another language like that, which is Crystal. <laughs> so Crystal in terms of DX, uh, it brings me joy because I like Ruby and I also like Crystal. It's very, very natural for me. And there are no compromises between developer experience and performance. And also, as we will see, it's easy to distribute. So in that uh, regard, it checks all the boxes for me. And same with Hyperfine, the hello world of Crystal is one millisecond, which then has leaves me a lot of room for uh, working in the plugin. And actually, I ran a, a test. Um, the, uh, the whole plugin runs in 20 milliseconds. So that's very good because uh, I still have room to add more features and it will be, still feel fast. I consider other languages like uh, Dino, for example, they have a very good DX and I really like TypeScript. The performance is not very good because the startup time again takes a lot. And the distribution, they allow to pack everything in a single binary, but it's just um, too big. It's 100 megabytes to try Lua. It's very cool too, but it's very fragmented, the tooling. And uh, I, I, since I already had the thing in, in Ruby implemented, I opted for Crystal because Again, it checks all the boxes for me. So now I'm gonna go through some highlights of the plugin real quick. This is like the um, the hint generation, so the the algorithm that I use to to generate the letters that we have there. So imagine for a second that this was our keyboard. Uh, we have like four things highlighted in the in the terminal. So in that very basic case. Uh, we just assign one letter to each highlight and that's fine, no? But yeah, if, and if we press A, we know that we mean this highlight. So there's no no problem there. Uh, right, okay. Then uh, imagine that we have five things to highlight, but our alphabet is just four. 
So let's say that we assign these letters here. And again, we press A. And now we have a problem because that means that we have two options there. And if our imaginary keyboard had an enter key <laughs> uh, and we press A, we would confirm the one on the top. But that means like an extra key press. And since this is all about keyboard efficiency and beam nerds and whatever, that's not acceptable. So, so yeah, that's what uh, we need to generate prefix free uh, codes. So A is a prefix of AA and the whole list of letters should be pre pre prefix free. So uh, there's an algorithm, an algorithm called Huffman. Um, yeah, there's always somebody that thought really hard about things uh, almost a century ago. <laughs> so at the end of the algorithm, you end up with this uh, tree structure and then you traverse it and you go generating these uh, hints and they are all prefix free. So that's very good. And the implementation itself, I'm not showing everything here, but in terms of the X, uh, crystals lets us uh, model the um, trees very easily using structs. And it doesn't get in the way when implementing the algorithm. I'm not showing everything here, but I mean, it's mostly English. <laughs> um, in terms of performance, I compare the Ruby implementation to the crystal implementation, which is the same plus a few type annotations. And the gains were crazy, like uh, you can see it here. Uh, more is better. <laughs> so this is like iterations per second for generating 1,000 hints. So yeah, some takeaways like learn about algorithms and data structures because they can help you go fast. Uh, Crystal offers high performance while maintaining a, a clear syntax. Then the issue that they, the main performance issue that they had uh, when writing the blind was that every call to Tmax is expensive because it's a sh um, shell call. Uh, so yeah, one trade-off that I did is that uh, I need to parse the options that the user have in the Tmux config file. Uh, so I try to do everything that I can in the initialization phase, which only happens once when you open Tmax and you only do that one every few days. Uh, so I try to do everything there uh, as much as I can. And then JSON serial disable really helped me here because I can uh, read the, uh, the options from the shell using expensive Tmux calls, save it to file system and just read from there. From there. Uh, in my experiments, even if JSON uh, feels uh, um, slow, um, is still faster than a shell call. So yeah, some, some takeaways here. Understand the flow of and usage of your applications. Like if you have a web server and you can do stuff when you boot the server, try to do that as much as possible instead of on each request. And apply, yeah, apply trade-offs on cache, whatever you can. Then, um, Optimizing the, the most calls themselves. Um, so yeah, caching can help with read operations, but not with like write op op operations. And for the blind to work, I needed to call Tmax like at least five times. So that's already 50 milliseconds. So that's not, not good. Uh, that's because every call to Tmax uh, is a process run uh, call, which forks the process, setups pipe for the communication and is expensive and slow. So I did this um, dirty hack <laughs> that they call the persistent shell where I initialize a shell once and then I send commands to it. Um, I have very good performance gains. I can see there like it's basically cutting half uh, over running it with the typical backbone stuff. So yeah, some takeaways from here is that if your program is more I/O bound than CPU bound, try to optimize those operations. And similar to database connections or an HTTP, keep alive or whatever, try to reuse connections as much as you can, uh, and use uh, the built-in benchmark tools to get real numbers rather than uh, feelings. <laughs> and regarding distribution, well, yeah. Uh, I'm shipping a static binary for Linux and a brew formula for Mac OS. There's no Tmax in Windows, so I didn't have to worry about that. And with GitHub actions and releases, uh, you can basically cater to, to everyone. 
uh, and the resulting footprint is very small still. So yeah, small recap. Uh, we learn how to what's Tmax, um, what's the benefits of using it, how to build a plugin, use algorithms and caching and re resource utilizations when you can, measure stuff and distribute your CLIs. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, I have a question. Um, for one instance, and there is no library for using Tmax, you have to go through process run, right? Yeah, there is no. So the Tmax is written in C, and uh, usually in C there is like this client server architecture of source that you can include as a library, no? And you can bind to it, but Tmax doesn't work like that. So the only way to to interact with it is through CLI. So yeah, this is like a way to, if the thing that you're trying to iterate, it doesn't have like a C bindings that you can hook into. Mm -hmm. This is a way to, to get like a small performance gain. Um, yeah. In the plugin itself, I have like a small class on top of that. So you have type safe, uh, thing you know yeah. so i wrap like if i list the panes i call this with the persistent shell and then initialize some structs with the pain information like the width height uh, whatever um yeah i have like a small api on top and one question uh, from youtube do you support arm how is it going with compilation arm in Crystal? Uh, still need to look into that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think that the, you, I guess you can cross compile, uh, but still to look into that. I mean, it works for, since in Mac you build from source uh, and this ARM based, uh, that works. Uh, if you build from source, it will work, but I don't ship uh, multi arc binaries yet. All right. Let's end the speaker again. Thank you.